Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of... Why are you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can-can and a can-can, a can-can, a can-can, and a wheel. Now we're off to... Hello, fam, and welcome back to the channel. Yes. You're at home, come on home, come on in the room, get your beverage of choice, get your plate, whatever you feel like eating, and let's cock a squat, let's sit down and discuss some things that happened on the Real Housewives of Atlanta season 14, shit on the way, was it, 11, episode 11, Cabin Fever. Whoo, child, let's start with the less busybody. Okay, we're going to talk about my yada. My yada was there. She was just really hanging around Candy. And Candy was trying to figure out what the hell was going on. She didn't really know. But I guess she got her something to eat. Because she was not even uh, trying to put up a fuss about anything. But we, we talking about my yada. I don't know why my yada was there. But she was thinking. Uh, <laughs> she was thanking Marlo for inviting her. And she saw her, how things went down. And this, that, and the third. I'm like, my yada, you don't sit yourself down so well. And just blend in the carpet. Blend in the walls. And just be a fly on the wall, honey. And just observe, observe, observe. So we're going to cast her out. We go to, um, hmm, go to Candy. Candy really didn't do nothing this particular episode, uh, but she did get Kenya straight. Yes, she did. She got Kenya straight. She's saying, the things you're doing to Marlo, that you say Marlo did to you, it's kind of looking like... It's a double standard here. You could do it, but you don't want Marlo to do it. Now, this is her trip. So, you need to give some leeway here because you acting a fool, too. You're running around here, going up and down the stairs, trying to get with the other girls. Marlo chasing you behind, up and down the stairs. Producers, uh, film crew, they just run up and down like y'all playing ring around the rosies, a pocket full of posies, ashes, ashes. You all fall down. You know what I'm saying? Doing a nursery rhyme. I'm like, what the hell y'all doing? Don't be scratching up no walls or, or, or go down themselves too fast. You might get the tumbling. And ain't nobody paying for no infringement, no accidents, no setbacks, okay? That's not what we do. We'll quickly rush you to the hospital, but that's about all we're going to do because you were doing it to yourself. Don't know why in the hell. Uh, Candy, uh, I mean not Candy, but Kenya was running from Marlo Child. But we on Candy, cause I, I, I like I said, I'm on Candy's side. I'm a fair weather friend now. I'm a fair weather friend, cause she do some infringement. She do something I don't like. I'm gonna be on the ass again. But right now, I'm liking what she giving me. She's playing. Uh, she's fall. She's really have fallen back. She's just a little observer too. Just we're gonna put her in the same boat with my yada. But uh, from what Candy said, they sat there two two and a half hours fussing. Now what? If it was me in production. I like that cut the scene. Let me let me have a, a break with y'all. Let me tell y'all, if we don't get a scene film, y'all ain't getting paid. Okay? It'll just be like that in white and black. Y'all don't care what y'all do. Just don't put your hands on nobody because we ain't got time to be trying to have no cops come and trying to arrest people. Y'all know y'all can't be uh, suing nobody. We ain't doing nothing to that degree. But if we don't get some footage out of him... Besides, y'all uh, sitting in the cars, playing on trampolines, running back and forth to the house, getting back in the uh, automobiles we have to take y'all gym mining. Okay, which that's what y'all was supposed to be doing. Y'all sitting up here acting like dumb asses. Okay, pretty much just dumb asses. Like y'all, not, and some of y'all got kids. Now you want your kids to act like grown up sometime. When you you know when they're doing some a uh, God forsaken stuff, but we got grown ups acting like kids. That's a uh uh. Then they start jumping on the trampoline in the back. It was really Mayetta, Drew, and I think um, Candy was out there trying to make it do what it do, and 
Then, uh, what's the name? Can you gonna come on down there and try to jump here and there? Then Marlo sitting up there talking about this is my sh this is my trip. I like Marlo. Did you pay for that trip, girl? Tell me, Marlo, did you put your own money in financing that trip? Cause you a bad mama drama if you did. Cause that uh that cabin didn't look like no cabin. It looked like a little mansion house. Okay. Woo! I wonder who the owner of that. I know they be getting some mad money doing a uh what do you call it a air our airbnb but that's neither here nor there what we were talking about but uh like i said candy was i think candy was full <laughs> her belly was full because you know she gets very agitated and angry when uh her belly is empty so i don't know what she ate behind the scenes that they didn't record but she was just sitting pretty you know she's like oh, this is too much it's too much I i'm not even gonna get involved with this bullshit okay so we move on from candy we go on to drew now candy on her speak on it uh platform she uh pretty much said that drew had bought uh a pocketbook full of bones <laughs> so my thing was just like candy was thinking this was premeditated so you kind of had an idea that fatoon was coming so you felt like she should ray lap dog so you bought some doggy treats okay but why you didn't bring the leash honey you could have bought the leash the bow and the kibbles and bits. You should have, if you were gonna go that far, giving a bump, you should have bought the kibbles and bits too. With the water on the side and with the leash that you wanna go walk up whenever you felt like it, okay? When she needed walking. See, that would have been my my deal. But, you know, you're an amateur, so we just, you know, like I said, you premeditated, but they didn't even really show anything. But that big old plastic or big old, um, rawhide type of bone for the um uh babies to be biting on sharpening their teeth or whatever they do just be i guess be playing with the bone okay but uh yeah that's what drew said i'm like drew i know you upset because i'm kind of upset with fatum too but we're gonna get to her but sometimes you gotta watch your man close when people are telling you stuff all the stuff that they tell you, especially if this coming to be the same rotation, the same set of facts they say that they're trying to give you, you got to make that shit work in your brain and wonder, ponder a little bit, pause. Is that possible that what they're saying that Ralph and the assistant are doing out there could it be true? That's how you should have turned it out. You don't never get uh you don't never get angry with people that's trying to give you information. Cause this might be information you can use in case you may have to do a divorce type of situation and you want all of you don't want half, you want all of his revenue to take care of you as well as the children. You see what I'm saying? So it's not smart to not let a person who called themselves dropping a dime on your husband. When in fact, he may be truly doing what the gossipers had said that he was doing. So I called foul on you, Drew. You ain't smart yet. You ain't smart, girl. Because what was you going to do? She's sitting up there talking about your husband. Some people say he was gay. Some people, you know, uh, just it's a whole lot of mess. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn, he already treats you like shit. Couldn't it be possible that they are telling the truth? But anyway, I digress. But, you know, like I said, you came with the, the, the roof, roof. And, and uh, I'm like, you should have did Scooby-Doo. Oh, hell, did a wolf call. Oh, that's what you should have did. That would have been a little bit more funnier than you talking about. Ruff, 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 ruff. That's, no, nah, you got to go with the big dogs. Woof. <laughs> you got to be a, a, what you call it, a great dame, girl. Shit. You got to be like Ren Tin Tin, a shepherd. Shoot. But you going on with them little bitty dolls. Ah, crack, crack, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but anyway, and you were on sitcom shows. I like, true, true, true. Do you have to have words written up for you to be able to memorize and bring it to the fruition of whatever scene you're trying to uh, implement out there? You can't just come up with your own shit. It's evidently you can't. You have to be given a script. And you have to play it out that way. Because it, that was just piss poor, Drew. Piss poor in my book. Okay? So, uh, let me see where we're going now. Okay, we got, let's talk about Fatoom. Fatoom, Fatoom, Fatoom. Sheree's Fatoom. Okay? 
Well, I see in your future. I'm not no uh, mind reader or, or Sue Seeker or anything like that. Sheree, you're going to mess up and give your friend of the show to Fatoum. Fatoum is a lot more interesting, and she got a lot she can bring to the show for as her theatrics. As you can see, we have Sonya. She's just being the bone collector. She done pretty much took you and Candy's spot of carrying bones two four and back you see what i'm saying but she she goes a little step farther and i don't know if that's a crime she committed or not okay she used her uh, capabilities of having resources to research people online to do background checks this that and the third now for tomb did you have drusa doris permission before you went pulling up shit and telling shit on live tv for millions of people to look at okay um drew wasn't buying a house from you you're in real estate i got it good but she wasn't buying a house from you so how could you possibly try to get her information to find out anything about her nefarious okay what what her husband may be doing when neither one of you neither one of them came to you to pull up stuff on them when you're doing stuff like that for tomb we don't shout it out to the masses okay we don't do all of that because that can be considered a stalker charge or some type of criminal charge civil charge she can bring against you just from what i'm seeing because most people don't have the time or the inclination to want to go research somebody unless you're that type of person when you're dating and you need to find out about this person you're dating because you you just really want to know what's going on with them and, and find out anything you can. So if it's not, is it it could be not worth your time to spend any quality time with that person. So I've heard of that. You're vetting or you're researching a particular guy that you feel like you can have a future with, but you really just want to know he's not really telling you what you need. So you no know, curiosity. I ain't never killed the cat that much, okay? Her cat's got nine lives, so you just killed one off him, okay? So he got eight more to live. So, but for you just to be like, oh, from what her assistant was saying about Sheree, which Sheree didn't really bring it home to getting uh, Juice Door sold up and shipped out like an OG should have done. She just let it play on, play on, play on. And, you know, they were, you know, sitting there making faces at each other at Brooklyn's birthday party. And, uh, what's the name? Drew was putting her hands all in straight face. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? You know what I'm saying? This is just too much. It's drama, but it's not drama that's pleasing me. You see what I'm saying? Oh, but anyway. Yeah. We got, uh, Sheree. Look like she's going to be off, off off Real Housewives of Atlanta because we had high hopes for her. But see, she done came a little bit too many times back to the fold and she don't bring us anything. But for Toom, now for Toom can be a friend of the family. I don't know if she want to hook up with Candy now or if she want to ride with Marlo. Okay, Candy's a safer bet because Marlo would chew you up and spit you out. And act like she did nothing wrong. So that's that level game Marlo's playing. She's trying to play the villain. She's doing a hell of a good job for doing that. And, I mean, that's what they pay her for, to bring the drama. Didn't matter how she brought it, as long as she brought it and she raised those numbers. Now, that's all I pretty much got to say about Sheree. It just seems like Fatum is going to assume your position and she's going to make it do what it do. Okay? Then we got Sonya over there. Sonya going back and forth talking to Kenya. Then she leave Kenya. She go talk to Marlo and tell her what Marlo said. I mean, what Kenya said to Marlo. Marlo called herself getting her panties in a bunch. Like she got to go handle this itch. You know what I'm saying? Because she's just walking all over her castle. And, and spewing hate and, and trying to turn her subjects against her because that's how marlo see them as and the sad part about it i really thought marlo was in her 50s because how she looked damn she looked like she in her late 50s to tell you the truth early 60s but on the contrary she's actually in her 40s she 40 something i'm like damn can you 
can you look younger than Marlo? Hell, I them look uh, younger than Marlo. Even Sheree has, okay? But uh, it just is what it is. Marlo had a hard life, I guess. Had a hard life. But uh, I can see Fatoum being a friend of Marlo or Candy. Because Candy has already said on her speak on it, she, Fatoum is cool with her. I don't know if it's the sexualness that she likes because Fatoum is kind of out there too with the sex escapades you know she's cleansing coochies and and all that stuff getting it ready for the next man at least that's what they did for Sheree so she's all into that stuff and um her and Candy would be a good match to be friends you know and I'm sure but we got Manjera over there I'm not really seeing how Manjera could really be a part of the show to tell you the truth because she, you know, she's like very soft-spoken. Don't look like she want to get in any kind of mess-mess. And she just don't seem the type to be up here arguing with these women. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what they are. They acting like children, but they are full-fledged, accountable women. Now, whether they want to hold themselves accountable, I don't, it's not going to happen, okay? Because Marlo threw this trip, but, you know, I'm thinking Bravo gave her the money. They just told her to pick the location because huh, Marlo is just sick. She's a sick-ass helper. She wants to just throw everybody out, okay? So, basically, Kenya came over to the camp, you know, came on over with her bags and, and all that good stuff. She came with a happy spirit, but Kenya knew she was going to start some bullshit. Instead of letting the shit go, going to do what you got to do and maybe start some bullshit at um the last couple of episodes of the season. Because you were doing real good. Kenya was doing real wind. You know, she was winding down. Didn't want to be the villain this time. And I was like, I loved her the last episode where she was running up and down. Uh, Sheree Steps trying to act like she was going out the door, but she couldn't find the door. So she, she just wanted to look geek he 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 ha 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 and let them chase her and that's the one we thought that's the personality we thought was gonna come up and show up uh at marlo's little get together at blue ridge but can you just sit up there god damn it that girl once they finally got where they were going as far as gym mining she went over and knocked over the trump sign <laughs> i'm like Kenya, Kenya, don't go to jail, okay? Don't go to jail. Don't be going up there tearing up that white man's shop, okay? Uh, but anyway, there's nothing here, nor there. But uh, once Kenya got to the Blue Ridge uh, cabin that they were staying at, a mini house, mansion, whatever you want to look at it for, because it was nice. That's all I can say. It was very, very nice. But uh, Molly had said, oh, Kenya's here. Oh, cool, cool, cool. So she... um. Met, met eye contact with Kenya. That's pretty much what the solid interaction they really had. And she told Kenya in a very nice, pleasant way. Once you get settled, I'm going downstairs to get my makeup done. Could you please come down and see me? I want to have a discussion with you. Now, that was not no malice involved. There was not nobody saying, you know, talking out the side of their neck, being rude to you, and, and any of that. She didn't display that. Now, Kenya. I'm going to have to call foul on you now. Because baby girl. Marlo did humble herself. Which she really shouldn't have had. To humble herself. She had quite quietly said. That this is a trip. She wanted to unwind. And she wanted the rest of the women. To unwind as well. And they tried to. Um, be pleasant with one another. For the time that they have to spend. With one another. During that three day trip. Okay. Can your ass went and saw everybody <laughs> in the house that she could possibly find and making small talk, making small conversations with them. Everybody else going around visiting Marlo. Got um we got Sonya visiting her, we got Trey visiting her, we got uh Moyella saying a little here and there. Oh job. But Kenya was nowhere to be found. When Kenya finally came where everybody was at, she was trying to tell uh, Sheree she wanted to set up an interview with her for somebody to help her release some of her products by, by, she, by Sheree, you know. That, that shit ain't never coming out. This is a thought impressing our minds whenever we think about Sheree. Because if Sheree really wanted to do something, hell, you could have had some underwear. 
Okay, some athletic underwear, some athletic sports band for your head to keep the sweat from rolling down your face. She could have water bottles. She could have had uh, a towel. Uh, what do you call it? A, 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 we call it an exercise mat. Shit something. She ain't got shit. So I ain't going to talk about she by charade no more. Because it's she by she didn't get the job done is what it is. And that's all I got to say about her attributes to being an entrepreneur and bringing out fashions. All right. Because I haven't seen them nowhere. Nowhere. The lowest part would be Walmart. The highest part would be Neiman Marcus. Haven't seen them anywhere. Okay. So I just say out of sight, out of mind. So we got to really, how you call it, train our mind not to think of she by charade when we see charade. You see what I'm saying? Because it's, it's absolutely a farce, a, a shame and a scandal to say that your name has gotten more hits on the Internet or more conversation pieces that people want to talk about when they want to talk about you and you have no fashion. Does that shit make sense to me? If you market it right, you could be on a level with candy, but you just say shit and don't do shit. And that's why you in shit. So we're just going to let it go. We got nothing else to say about uh, Sheree specifically. Other than. I forgot. But I think it was Marlo. Who ended up in, inviting uh, Fatum. If I'm not un misunderstanding the situation. I think Marlo did. Because you know Fatum liked to uh, play. She likes to hang around Sheree. And she likes to party. So that's what she was just looking for a good time. But Drew having liked that girl since day one when she opened up her mouth and said her husband must be gay or something that to that effect. And I'm like, everybody throwing out the gay word. That don't really mean that they really, really uh, believe that they're gay unless they catch them in a gay bar, a gay hanging out space. And it's just you a little bit too close to the other brother or something to that nature. Then you can kind of see I think it would be plausible that he might go both ways if he's not really trying to be gay altogether. But uh, it just is what it is. But then we'll go straight to Marlo. Now, Marlo Hampton is a real bitch. Okay, she really is. She's a real bitch. But I'm sure she claims it and she lives in it and she stands in it. She stands 10 feet, well, 10 toes down, 10 fingers in the air. Okay. Because you have a habit of just throwing people away. Okay. You threw the sons or your nephews away for one month stay. You took advantage of the, the uh, generosity of your baby sister. Because she already had, what, four kids of her own. Three or four kids of her own. And you're going to truck two more teenagers attacked to that living space that your sister was living in. Didn't have the room. Didn't have the space. Didn't really have the, uh, what do you call it, the motivation to take on two younger uh, teenagers, I guess you would call them. She didn't have the space. She didn't have the time. And she didn't have the money because you had set up there and said you would wire her some money. Okay. I'm like, should she have a credit card where she could keep in her possession and get the boys what they need? Okay, but I don't understand because it seems like how I feel and how I've researched the law when it comes to you adopting them or you're taking care of them and you're being the legal parent of them or guardian of them since their mother is no longer in the picture right now. You were getting paid from the state, Marlo. Mm -hmm. You were getting paid from the state. Because it was just something the state gives a person who is taking on another person's responsibility. So, it's a hot mess, Marlo. You threw the boys away for 30 days. That's a month. Most parents that are good parents out there that tend to their children. To see that they got their academics on point. To make sure they're emotionally together and spiritually uh, fed. Okay, so you didn't like it when you were in foster care and you, you blame your mom real, real, real hard and bad about doing what she did to you to have to 
put you in foster care. So you know about the comings and goings, the mixed feelings and emotions you go through because you don't have nobody per se that loves you and want to take you in and uh, you be their protector, their guide, and, you know, the all in all, I guess you could say, uh, far as taking care of them and making sure their livelihood is uh, well taken care of as well. So I am, I'm just, oh, I'm at a loss to say, when are you going to stop throwing people out your life? Okay, because you just told the women they had to go. Not that you were going back home, because that's what I thought you were saying. But I got, I, I got, you know, I had to listen to it a little bit closer. You had said that the only thing the girls were bringing you was down. You only have, in, you don't have any peace unless you're focused away from those people. Okay. And you're tired of it because they should be there for you. And yada, 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 yada. But I'm like, uh, yeah. So you just threw out the kids. Now you're throwing out your co-workers or your cast members because they won't show you respect. Now, the only person that should have kept their raggedy tail there at home and just stood until y'all got back because it's just a um, three-day weekend, really two-day weekend, was Kenya Moore. Kenya Moore was not going to act right. She did. <laughs> she don't see it for Marlo. And I understand why she don't see it for Marlo. But Marlo's trying to keep her peace. And maybe the uh, who's who's of that particular franchise told her, look, if you want another peach um, solidified for next season, you're going to have to cut up. So it's basically she's doing what somebody has told her to do. Or maybe she's just doing it. Because she feels like she can do it and get away with it. Who knows? Go figure. Uh, <laughs> but you didn't have no right to throw those women out without a good explanation. I mean, it ain't like somebody got to fight and y'all tore up the whole house. And then you had to, like, take all the credit card numbers because you weren't paying for the shit. Those who were involved in the altercation was going to pay for it. It was not a situation like that. You had candy there. She ain't do nothing wrong, but just try to be there for you and try not to upset you since it was a more of a relaxation meditation type of trip that you were trying to form. But, you know, can you uh, mess that up? We had Drew and Fatoum at each other's throats and throwing charade in the mix here and there. So I could see the frustration. But the only person I saw that was cool, calm, and collected and tried to stay far away from the mess was Candy and Moneta. Okay? Because Candy know better. She didn't have to go all the way around the world and then back. Okay? Oh, like she was running from the um <laughs> the uh the uh the wolf and red robin what do you call it? Little red robin little red robin hood. I think it was a riding hood. Shit, it was something like that. Y'all know the uh, white girl in a um, uh, red coat or uh, cloak walking through the woods, okay? So, I was like, it's neither here nor there. Marlo, you ain't full of shit. I mean, you just full of shit, Marlo. You're not a very good person. Because for you to throw out people that are younger than you, well, some of them, I think women, Drew might be younger. Mm, Candy should be in her close to her feet. Hey, okay, put it like this. We don't give a shit. But, Marla, you can't keep throwing people away. Okay? Sometimes you have to be the bigger person or be quiet sometimes. Let them hang their own self because they keep going on and on again. Because Candy uh, had to, I wouldn't say attack, but she had to get Kenya straight. Yes, she did. And I like it. I like that Candy. Likes her as a friend, love her like a sister, but she don't let her get away with the bullshit. So I like that type of relationship that she has with Kenya. Uh, she's definitely grown as a person. She's matured um, very well, and, and I have to salute Candy. You know what I'm saying? I have to salute her. So, um, but the rest of them clowns from Sonya, Drew, Fatoon, Marlo. Um, that's about it. Cause the only person that really didn't get their feet wet or, or get into any of the drama was Mayella and Candy. 
And Sheree tried to shy away here and there because the beef was really uh, between Drew and Fatoon. So, yeah, but Milo, you oh girl, you better you better change your way, girl. Cause Karma is a bitch, and she's been coming back quicker rather than later these days. Okay, so I think you need to stop trying to get under these girls' skin, and I ain't gonna say be a coon by y'all person all the time, cause that's that's not even uh really a, a feat you can handle at this time. Because something or someone is going to get on your nerves here and there throughout your lifetime. Uh, but, like I said, I, the, all of them should have had ca cabin fever. Because I was ashamed of all of them that they had to wait for two hours and a half before they could go on a, a what we call a mining type of gem search for natural stones and stuff under the earth. Uh, seemed like quite boring to me, but it just is what it is. That's what she had put together for them to do. And they sat two and a half hours in the driveway because they didn't want to ride with this person. They didn't want to be near this person. Oh, it was just too much. I I was like, uh-uh. Y'all could have had that trampoline scene much quicker, and that would have got y'all in better spirits for y'all to get y'all behind on down now to that, um, uh, um, uh, exhibition that she wanted y'all to go on but yeah so that's all i had for real housewives of atlanta uh season 14 episode 11 cabin fever that's all they gave me honey that's all they gave me but i was said shit i would have been on the next thing smoking right back from Atlanta. <laughs> i would have gassed up my car but i forgot she she had cars for them so, but then I think when she was throwing them out, she was trying to tell them they had to get their own way back. That is some bullshit. You throw the women out after begging them to come to your trip. Then you're going to talk about they're going to have to find their own way back? That's some fucked up shit, Marlo. That's some fucked up shit. Oh, Lord, that's some messed up stuff, girl. But I guess that's how you're going to be, honey. But I hope you ain't taking a page out of Nene Leakes' book. Because I, I really don't think she did anything to that nature or to that degree that I can remember. Where she th Well, yep, yeah, she did the same shit, too. Now, uh, they were late coming when she was calling herself living or going to have a home in Los Angeles because she thought her acting career was going to hit off. Yeah, she did because uh, she was... Kenya had gave her some furniture because she didn't feel like moving it to Georgia or whatnot when she was staying out there. And she was um, uh, letting Nene have some of her furniture. That's when they was on good terms way back when. And anyway, the women showed up, I think, maybe three hours late. And Nene was like, I ain't, uh -uh, we ain't finna do this. They can't come in and they will not get any food. <laughs> and, you know, Candy was one of those members. And she said, uh-uh, somebody got to give me something. So she was just playing, um... I wouldn't say even Devin's advocate. She was just mad. She wanted them to pay. She didn't care how uh, they felt or their stomachs felt. They were wrong. They were three hours late. And then they think they can come up and show up and show out whenever they feel like it. And she's like, no, 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 no. Now, and I felt Nene on that. They could have been definitely uh, a little bit more considerate. But Greg was there. You know, uh, calmer heads had prevailed. He had told them, you know, they couldn't come in now because he didn't want to upset his wife at the time because she was just raising prenatal hair around now. He made sure they got some food and they molded their little behinds on. But it was like, okay, Kenny was trying to do something crazy again. But no, you cannot show up for somebody's event. They told you when the event started. Now, fashionable, fashionably late people may come an hour late. You know what I'm saying? Because they're going to come, make sure everybody's there so they don't have to wait for, you know, the pleasantries. They can just get on and tell, eat the food and then mingle and mix after that. So, but you can't come up on nobody's thing no three hours late and think anybody's going to have a good attitude towards your presence. But, yeah, that's all I have for this particular video, guys. Um, and I will see you next time to review The Real Housewives of Atlanta next week. All right. See you later. Bye.